today's technology age, with everything available at once, it is hard to realize that it was not always this way. The ability to mass-produce books led to some of the most pivotal moments in history, which may have never happened without the printing press. Oral tradition was the first widespread form of communication, where information was passed down by generation to generation. Eventually, these stories were written down by and recorded by scribes. For many thousands of years, cultural tradition and stories were passed down through oral tradition. Trade routes such as the Silk Road spread ideas from Asia to Europe, and vice versa, and it was a way of communicating to the different cultures. Caravans of traders went from one place to another, bringing their ideas with them. When goods were exchanged, so were ideas. European traders brought back Chinese inventions with them, including paper making, gunpowder, the compass, and xylography. Xylography was a method of woodblock printing found in China 500 years beforehand. Ink was set onto an engraved wooden block and was pressed onto paper. Although it worked well for small prints, it was not easy to mass produce items using xylography. During the early medieval era, Bibles were traditionally written in Latin and were created by monks and groups of artisans by hand. The only people that could read and own the Bibles were the wealthy elite, monks, royalty, and members of the papacy. Bibles were treated as relics due to the time and money used to create the books. The Wenceslas Bible was created in Bohemia from 1402 to 1403 and commissioned by King Wenceslas IV. The book was created by a group of artisans and displayed detailed pictures of Wenceslas himself and biblical illustrations, such as the conceiving of the Ten Commandments and the depictions of the prophets Jeremiah, Daniel, and Isaiah. Johannes Gutenberg's printing press created pages at a much faster pace than traditional methods of printing, such as woodblocks. Movable type was invented in China in 1040 AD as singular wooden pieces. It was brought to Europe by businessmen around the 14th century and was put to use in Gutenberg's press. The type was made of tin and lead. Movable type was cleaner and allowed for typography and fonts. Many pieces were put together on a matrix to create text for a page. A goose skin covered bowl was evenly applied with ink and a worker called a beater set the ink on top of the matrix, applying it to every letter. The paper was set onto a tympan, where little pins on each side poked holes into the paper to hold it in place. The printer could then flip the paper over through the pinholes in order to get an even print on the opposite side. Once in place, the paper was set squarely atop the movable type and slid under the weight. The weight was brought down onto the paper and pressed in by a puller. The first major work created using Gutenberg's press was the Gutenberg Bible, a 1,300 page book put in two volumes. The production led to 180 copies sold for a large sum of 30 florins. Some were littered with blank spaces, spaces that were later filled in by scribes who added intricate details to individual Bibles. Pope Pius II praised the print as exceedingly clean and correct in their script and without error. A single press could churn about 3,600 pages per workday. Europe was now able to mass produce texts like never seen before in history. As early as 1452, indulgences were printed on at the request of the Catholic Church cardinals. These slips, made out of vellum or calfskin, promised less time in purgatory for people and their deceased. Indulgences were sold to create revenue for the Catholic Church, and thousands of indulgences could be sold in one visit to a town. The printing press was able to produce many indulgences at a cheap cost and allowed the Catholic Church to sell more of the slips. Martin Luther was born in Eiselben, Germany in 1483. In 1505, Luther was caught in a vicious storm and prayed that God would allow him to survive. If he did, Luther would spend the rest of his life serving him. Luther became an Augustinian friar and several years later began teaching theology as a doctor at the University of Wittenberg. Luther wondered about his eternal salvation and how one went to heaven or hell. While studying, he stumbled upon Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 which stated, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift from God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Luther decided that the teachings of the Catholic Church and their mismanagement of indulgences was unacceptable, and began to state that salvation was not of works, but by sola fide, or by faith alone. On the front door of the castle church in Wittenberg, Luther posted his 95 theses, 
individual arguments against the Catholic Church's teachings. The sheet was taken by printers and turned into a pamphlet, which circled around Germany. Due to the controversy caused by his theological standpoints, the Elector of Saxony, Frederick III, protected Luther by allowing him to lodge in Wartburg Palace. There, Luther wrote his New Testament translation from the original Greek into the vernacular German. The Bible was published in 1522, and the first 3,000 copies sold within the first three months. Luther believed followers of the faith should be able to read the Bible themselves. By 1534, approximately one-third of literate Germans owned the New Testament text. With the help of associates, Luther finished translating the Old Testament that year. Without the use of Gutenberg's printing press, the Reformation would have likely faltered, and Martin Luther's ideas faded into obscurity. The Catholic Church believed in geocentrism, where the Earth was the center of the universe, with perfectly heavenly spheres orbiting around it. For hundreds of years, the idea was never questioned. Copernicus was born in 1473 and studied at the University of Bologna as a physician. Studied at Padua for astronomy and Ferrara, where he received a doctorate in canon law. All of Copernicus's work was written in traditional Latin. In 1514, he published the essay Commentarialis, which introduced to his heliocentric theory of the universe. The heliocentric theory explained how the Earth and all other planets revolved around the Sun. This piece was sent to various scholars and astronomers who highly discouraged the work, as it was against the Catholic Church. For many years, Copernicus wrote parts of On Revolutions, which was published with the help of Recidus, a scholar. Before his death, he had completed the work going extensively into heliocentric theory and his idea on the orbits of planets in the solar system. Born in 1564, Galileo Galilei was inspired by the Copernican theory and studied at the University of Pisa for medicine. He left without a degree and began his two-decade study on motion. After teaching at Padua, he became head of mathematics in 1592. In 1609, he created the first telescope and began to study the heavens. He illustrated the moon's phases and discovered that contrary to popular belief at the time, the moon was cratered and rocky. Galileo discovered four moons around Jupiter and observed the ring circling Saturn. These discoveries disrupted the Catholic understanding of heavenly bodies. While observing, he confirmed the Copernican theory of the heliocentric universe. His book, Starry Messenger, detailed these discoveries and was a major turning point in the scientific revolution. The scientific revolution began with the work of Copernicus and without the printing press, his research would have been lost, and the search for answers about the heavens would have never begun. John Locke was an English philosopher in the 17th and 18th century, whose works laid the foundations for modern-day liberalism. His two treaties on government introduced the theory that humans were born with the right to life, liberty, and property. The treatise inspired America's founding fathers and the Declaration of Independence, in order to gain agreement with slave-owning southern states, Thomas Jefferson and the writers of the Declaration of Independence replaced property with the pursuit of happiness. The American Revolution was based on the ideas of Locke and gaining a government separate from Great Britain's monarchy. Soon afterwards, the ideas from the Enlightenment and America's Revolution inspired the French Revolution, removing Louis XVI from power. John Locke's ideas were part of the Enlightenment which led to major changes in the Western world's political structure. Johannes Gutenberg's printing press revolutionized the world. People were able to communicate their ideas throughout Europe. Without it, many of the societal changes such as the Reformation, Scientific Revolution, and Enlightenment would have never occurred. The ability to communicate ideas, which could be seen by others, allowed knowledge to spread like wildfire inspiring new generations of writers, scientists, and revolutionaries. Even today, the effects of the printing press continue to change the world for the better.